Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to carry out the composition of functions. Before we get started, let's go over the strategy that we're going to be employing in carrying out our composition of functions. Step one, we're going to write down the expression that's to be found. Secondly, we'll identify the outer and inner functions from that um, expression. We'll then write down the outer function. After writing down the outer function in step four, we will replace all the x's in the outer function with parentheses. Why are we doing this? In step five, that enables us to substitute the name of the inner function on the left and its value on, on the right parentheses. Okay. After carrying out the substitution, we will then simplify as indicated in step number six. All right, so we have the steps um, strategy on the side right here for your reference, and I'm going to enumerate my steps. So if you have any questions, um, you can just indicate what line you find confusing in the comment section. On, uh, we will be glad to assist you accordingly. For number one, uh, what if we what if um, we have two functions h and g h of x equals negative x minus 3 and g of x equals 4x plus 1 what if we were to find h composed with g of x All right, so in this problem, we're going to be carrying out the composition of two linear functions. So um, as indicated in step one of our strategy, we'll first of all write down the expression to be found. This is what we're looking for, h composed with g of x. And this can be written as h of g of x. Now, in step two, we have to identify the outer or parent and inner function. In this problem, whichever one comes first, whichever function comes first, that is the outer. So this is the outer function. And g of x is your inner function. Okay? Now, uh, we have carried out the identification. Uh, the next thing to do is to write down the outer function. The outer function is h of x which is equal to negative x minus 3. Next, we're going to replace all the x's in the outer function with parentheses. So we have h on the left side, we put a parenthesis that's sufficiently large to take in the name of the inner function. And on the right side, negative, we're going to take the x out and make sure our parenthesis is big enough to take in the value of the inner function. So negative x, negative parentheses, minus 3. Now we're going to advance to step 5, substitute the name of the inner function, which is g of x, on the left. And what is the value of g of x? g of x equals 4x plus 1. So that will be substituted on the right as the value of the inner function. All right. And now step six uh, is to simplify. We're just going to simplify the right side of our composite function. So h of g of x is equal to, now we're going to distribute negative one. Anytime you're distributing negative one, you want to proceed with caution. Why? Because it's easy to forget to distribute the negative sign to every term in the parentheses. So distribution involves distributing that negative one to every single term in the parentheses. So that yields negative four X minus one, and then we bring down the minus three. Combine these two, that yields negative four. So our composite function H composed with G of x is equal to negative 4x minus 4. All right, so there goes our uh, final answer. 
All right, let's take a look at uh, number two. For problem two, what if we have a um, function h of t equal to t minus five and g of t equals two t squared plus five. Now, what if we were to find h of g of t? All right, so step number one, we want to write down um, the expression that's to be found. So we're looking for h of g of t. Okay, and we can clearly see that the outer function is h and the inner is g of t. So we're going to write down the outer function first. So h of t is the outer function that is equal to t minus 5. Now, um, after writing down the outer or parent function, we're going to replace all the um, t's with parentheses. That is the independent variable here. So we have h parentheses. Um, the name is going to go on the left side. The value, um, we have this binomial that goes on the right. So let's make the parentheses big enough for that, minus 5. Now we're going to substitute the name of the inner function. This is the inner function right here into the left side, g of t. And then the value is 2t squared plus 5. Okay. Now after carrying out the substitution as indicated to us in step 5 of the strategy, we're now going to simplify, all right? So h of g of t is going to be 2t squared plus 5 minus 5. Imagine as though there is a 1 in front of this parenthesis right here. When you distribute the 1 to both terms, you just drop off the parenthesis. Now we can combine 5 and negative 5. That drops off. So we have h of g of t uh, being equal to 2t to squared. And that is your final answer. All right, let's take a look at um, problem number three. So for problem three, what if we have the parent function h of n equals n to the third plus one, and uh, the inner function g of n equals um, 2n minus two, and we're to find h of g of n. All right, so following the strategy we have listed on the right, we're going to proceed to um, write down the expression that we're looking for. So we're looking for h composed with g of n. Okay. All right, next step, we're going to um, identify the outer and the inner function. We can clearly see that h is the one on the outer. So when this, in this problem, the outer function is h and the inner function is g. So we're going to proceed to write down the outer function. The outer function is h, so we have h of n equals n to the third plus one. In step four, we'll replace all the parentheses with n, that's the independent variable here. So we have h parentheses equals now for the n, let's look at the size of the inner function. It's a binomial, so let's make sure that that parenthesis is big enough for this uh, size of the binomial, and then plus one, okay? So I arrived at line three by replacing all the n's, the independent variable with parenthesis as indicated in step four. Okay, now uh, we're now going to, um, Put in the name of the inner function, g of n, on the right, and then it's on the left, sorry, and then the value is 2n minus 2 that goes on the right. Now we're going to proceed to simplify, as indicated in step 6 of our strategy for composition. So h composed with g of n 
two n minus two to the third power simply means we will, we will multiply two n minus two by itself three times. Just as though we have three copies of two n minus two multiplied by each other and then plus one. Okay, now I'm going to do my scratch work on the side here, the multiplication. So we have, I'm going to do it, uh, I'll multiply the first two and then multiply the third one, okay? So 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 2. This is a binomial multiplied by a binomial. I can just simply foil out this uh, expression. So we'll go first, outer, inner, and then last, okay? All right, let's go ahead and carry that out. Um, 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times negative 2 is negative 4n. Uh, negative 2n times 2n, negative 4n. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Okay, so the product will be 4n squared minus, if you combine the two middle terms, negative 8n plus 4. Okay? Now we're going to multiply this result by the 2n minus 2 here. So I'm, I'm going to multiply vertically now, 2n minus 2. The reason why, why I'm multiplying um, vertically is, it, is for organizational reasons. It helps me organize my like terms in a way that makes it easy to combine downwards, okay? All right, so what I'll do here is I'll multiply negative 2 by uh, every single term in this uh, trinomial here. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 8 is um, positive 16n. Negative 2 times 4n squared is negative 8n squared. 2n times 4 uh, is positive 8n. 2n times negative 8n is negative 16n squared. 2n times 4n squared is going to yield 8n to the third. Okay, now we're going to proceed to just combine downwards. If you notice, using this um, approach, all the like terms are already aligned vertically, so we just combine downwards, okay? So we have negative eight, um, we have um, a positive 16 plus 8n is plus 24n. Negative 8n squared minus 16n squared is negative 24n squared. And then we bring down 8n to the third. All right, so this is the expanded form. Okay, so now we're going to reinsert this expanded form right back into the um, equation that we have here. So we have h of g of n is equal to 8n to the third minus 24n squared plus 24n minus 8. That represents the product of 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 2. So do not forget this positive one, just bring it down. Uh, the last two constants are like terms, so we can combine them to give us our final result, which will be 8n to the third minus 24n squared plus 24n. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. All right, so there goes um, our final result. Okay, let's take a look at uh, question number four. <clears throat> so for problem four, what if uh, we have two functions, um, g of x equals x squared plus 2x, and um, f of x equals x minus 1. What if we were to, we were to find um, g composed with f of x? What will that be? All right, so following our strategy on the right, um, we'll first of all write down the expression to be found. So we're looking for g composed with f of x, uh, which is the outer function here is g. So we have g composed with f of x. 
So the inner function is f in this case, okay? All right, so now we have written down the expression to be found. Number two, we're going to identify the outer and inner functions. So g of x is the outer function. As we can see, this is the outer. And the inner function, which we will be substituting into g is f of x, okay? So let's go ahead and write down the um, outer function first, as indicated in step three of our strategy. So outer function g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x, okay? Now, we're going to replace all the x's in g of x with parentheses so we can carry out the substitution. Now, I'll take out the x here, replace it with parentheses, that equals... Take out the x on the right side, take out the x's, we're going to be putting the value of the inner function f, which is a binomial, in there. So make sure it's sufficiently large to compensate for its size, like that. Okay, now, the uh, name of the inner function is f of x, and its value is x minus 1. So plug in x minus 1 here and then x minus 1 there. After the substitution, we'll advance to step 6 of our strategy, which is to simplify. Okay, so g composed with f of x is equal to x minus 1 square is not x square minus 1 square. It's x minus 1 times x minus 1. So please be careful with that. Over here, do not forget to distribute 2 to both terms in the parentheses. So that yields 2x minus 2. All right, let's go ahead and simplify further. We can um, expand x minus 1 times x minus 1. Uh, we'll just spoil it out. So if we do first, x times x is x squared. x times 1, negative x. Negative 1 times x, negative x. Plus minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, plus 2x minus 2, okay? And then finally, our final answer, g composed with f of x, which is the same thing as g of f of x, is equal to x squared, stands alone. Now let's combine like terms, negative x minus x plus 2x. Negative x minus x is negative 2x plus 2x yields 0x, so all those just cancel each other out. And then plus 1 minus 2 is negative 1, okay? So there goes our answer, so all these add up to 0. Our final answer is x squared minus 1, okay? So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. Um, if you found this tutorial helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up. We we'll appreciate your positive feedback. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder to other cool tutorials um, such as this. If you have any questions, uh, please include it in the comments section below, and uh, we'll be glad to address it as uh, soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathgutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.